years since the Castle Eden Cup brought the North's top ice hockey teams on collision course. It's been a decade of great matches, great players and great action. It started back in 86 and Durham have rarely let go of the Cup since. Some real characters have grabbed the spotlight over the years. 88 was a vintage one, the shootout drama was unbearable. Durham's Rick Brabant was by now on his way to a goal-scoring record. The 90s began with a Russian rocket launching Wasps to victory. And 12 months later, an explosive final saw the Bombers blown away. By 92, Durham were lifting a third cup. They'd won the other two outright. Then the Johnsons came back home with Humberside and robbed their old club. Last year, the old order was restored when Durham made the Warriors suffer. So will it be 9 out of 10 for the Wasps? Which club will be celebrating a happy anniversary? Good evening and welcome to the historic city of Durham. We're on red alert tonight both for the floods behind me and for the ice hockey in tonight's Castle Eden Cup. When you come to this city, you usually visit the cathedral and the castle. Well, tonight, all the action is at the Riverside Rink. And making their way there now are the Sheffield Steelers. They're the new team on the ice for the Championship of the North. They've never played in the Castle Eden Cup, but they've got plenty of experience, especially in Mike O'Connor. He captained the Wasps to triumph in this very competition. Yorkshire rivals Humberside Hawks have the Johnson family to show them the way. Coach Peter and his three sons, Stephen, Anthony and Sean, were all Durham to the core. They know they've a hot reception ahead of them. Whitley Warriors are getting ready for battle and they'll be looking to break their duck. The Tynesiders have been in five finals but still haven't got their hands on that trophy. Could this be their year? But the home fans have come to regard the Castle Eden Cup as Durham property. If the Wasps can complete their third hat-trick of wins, they'll have three trophies on permanent display in their cabinet. But this year's competition should be the toughest yet to win. We've both semi-finals ahead of us this evening. We start with Humberside Hawks against the holders Durham Wasps. Then it's Whitley Warriors against the new entrants Sheffield Steelers. The winners are back here again tomorrow night for the 10th anniversary final. Our semi-finals have a quick-fire look about them. The teams play two periods with the clock always running, no stoppages. Then a final period of a quarter of an hour straight hockey with the clock stopping as usual. First up, we've Humberside Hawks against the holders Durham Wasps. And taking us through the teams is our very own expert and co-commentator, Paul Ferguson, who's been with us for every year of the tournament. Coach Peter Johnson guided Durham to the first ever Castle Eden Cup win, then masterminded their only final defeat as Hawks boss in 93. The Johnson brothers give the club an outstanding English backbone, but they're not the only former Northeast connection. Look out for goal-scoring machine Scott Morrison. The former Billingham and Whitney man is still knocking them in. Scotty was at his dangerous best when Humberside overcame Sheffield in a Yorkshire thriller a fortnight ago. Just to show what the Hawks can do when they're flying. Player coach Richard Little is the man with the job of giving Durham stability at the time of major change on and off the rink. But last year's winning skipper, Chris Norton, has rejoined him as a part of a trio of Billingham Bombers exiles. Now there's a new generation of wasps coming through. Players like Michael Tasker are keeping up the homegrown tradition. And they've also got the experience of Castle Eden veteran John Ardale to draw on. The former warrior is now a Durham danger man. This semi-final really could go either way. In the commentary box with Paul is Roger Thames. Let's have a quick look at the teams. First, Humberside, Mike Bishop and Scott Young, and the two imports on defence. There's a Johnson in attack on each line, but no Sean, the youngest brother. He's out with a knee injury. High-scoring Darcy Carhill forms a formidable first line with Morrison. Phil Huber is the other import to look out for. Four times Humberside have played Durham this season already, and the Hawks have won them all. Now Durham Wasps, they finally sorted out their imports with a trio of ex-bombers snapped up, including their former skipper Chris Norton. 
Richard LaPlante and Todd Bidner have both been brought into the first line with the vastly experienced Mike Shea on defence. Coach Richard Little leads the second line, flanked by Iredale, the last of the Smith dynasty, Damien. The Wasps now looking more solid. Well, the fans already getting into the atmosphere as we await the start of the 10th Castle Eden Cup Finals. And it's Durham in the all-blue, acting actually as the away team. Uh, it's Humberside with the home advantage, or the home bench anyway, and looking to stamp themselves onto this semi-final at the first attempt. Remember, the clock keeps on running for the first two periods, and that will certainly put the pressure on both teams, Paul, to really get out there and really get at it. It takes a while to get used to that, because most teams take a little while to get into the game they relax they feel each other out and test their systems and that but not in this one you don't have time for that it's been very much the feature of these castle eden semi-finals the quick far nature has thrown up some really ferocious matches and these two teams probably the two middle seeds in the competition very evenly balanced and even though humberside have picked up all the results so far this season when these two teams have met a lot of changes in the Durham team in the last month or so and coach Richard Little is convinced there are a lot different prospects in 95 than in the latter stages of 94. Weaver square across the ice. Laplante is a danger man wearing seven. And back checks Norton, the skipper. He's lost out there. A good save. Good save Stephen Johnson. Swift reactions there from Classy Cahill came in. Well, the first save for Johnson then, but by far the sharpest. Morrison out muscling. Norton on the far side got the pass back to Cahill. Great corner here though. And this first time Thompson's come out, and I think we've got our first penalty of the match. And it's going against Humberside. Johnson will go to the box. Number 12, Anthony Johnson. 16 goals and 54 assists so far in the league. Wilkinson forward. LaPlante. And that's the opening goal for Durham. LaPlante gets it. Just as Bidner was flattened at the blue line by Bishop, LaPlante picks up the puck and finishes it off. Bidner won't mind that at all as long as they get a good result. Right there, Bidner goes down hard, right at the blue line. But look who picks up the puck. The plant goes in, slides it down, and that's number one in the game. So, Wasps go ahead, 1-0. Now, we've won it back here. Oh, that was good move, but it closed up straight away as well. It was a golden opening there, probably the best they've had. Durham were getting back quickly on the defense. Every once in a while you see an opening out there, but the Durham Wasps are closing it down. They're playing some clever defensive hockey. And they've got the advantage at the end of a frenetic first period that seen just the one goal, very little in it at the moment. Hawks nil, Wasps won. Richard LaPlante then getting the only goal so far. He did have a spell with Billingham from Montreal originally and uh, doing his stuff for Durham now. Here we go with the second period then. Still it's running time. Another 15 minutes of non-stop uh, overheated action. Hawks look quite composed when they got a control on the puck but their actual shooting was perhaps below the firing rate of the Wasps and eventually that told Little there trying to feed the puck into centre ice it's Hawks now looking to get straight back into this semi-final it's the first icing call the Hawks looking to free Scott Morrison, who was breaking through neutralized territory, but that was always going to go all the way down the ice. Lost 
under a touch of pressure here. Well, that's very close indeed, and Thompson was sliding across the face of his goal and just about held on, but here's Laplante, Laplante, he was just looking to take it one side of the goalie, but it's still going, and that was a good save there from Thompson. Johnson fired straight into the pads of Shea. It's a dangerous run right across the face again. And Durham just getting bodies in the way of it. And Johnson could hardly have seen that one. They're coming in a bit fine at the moment, Paul Durham. Now, this is amazing stuff. It really is going at a frantic pace out there. And both teams have their coaches behind the bench saying, slow down, but it's not easy to do when you see the seconds ticking away. A moment ago, we saw Todd Bittner set up Laplante. There's a nice understanding developing between these two players. Laplante just ran out of places to go. But uh, they're starting to work well, and Todd laid on a lovely pass right at blue line. This at the other end of the rink is the action going towards the Durham goal. Turn from Laplante. Ardell is in the middle. Ardale. Laplante. Oh, hit the pipes. What a terrific move as well. That was super slick. And what? An inch, two inches away from the second goal. Lovely move, Paul. It was a lovely move, as you said. I don't know if Ardale should have passed it back. He did the right thing because uh, Laplante was free out there. Perhaps a lot of players would have taken a shot from Ardale's position, but hey, Laplante was open. And uh, unfortunately for him, he hit the metal work. Stay back! Go back, Richard! Jesus Christ! Now it's Hawks, they're going to get back in it. Morrison. Watch this move. Morrison gets the return pass and hits the one-timer. Look who's there. Foster right on the doorstep, saving the game so far. A break on now with Bidner. Tasker. Morton followed up then, and the net beckoned. Tasker back. Bidner, Bidner now, Bidner, yes, had to be. 2-0, no doubt about that one. And he really cashed in there. He was left one-on-one -on -one with the keeper. And thanks a lot. Todd Bidner, the Canadian, with his British passport now. A long pass right up to the blue. For a moment, it looked like he lost it. Thompson goes back. But look at the right side of Thompson. It's wide open. That was just calling out to Bidner, shoot in this area. Seventh shot of the period, just as in the first, brings a goal. 2-0 now, Wasps lead. Johnson. Oh, it's really hotting up now. Bishop was involved in that collision with Shea, and Shea is the man being counted out at the moment. Horner was standing right along the boards, but I think he missed this when the first hit went in. Watch the high stick come in, and the, the forearm from Young, and the referee missed that one completely. A moment ago, Shea got a good hit, and then Shea is flattened, but the referee should have spotted that. And they're still arguing down there. Three Graham Horner. Johnson's there. Bishop's there. Paul Ferguson next to me. He's looking completely baffled by it all, let alone the players. Yes, we got a penalty in the end. Well, Johnson has gone into the penalty box. Anthony Johnson. Young is now making his way to the penalty box. 
And Johnson got the unsportsmanlike conduct the young Ann Johnson are now over in the box Norton Young Johnson Young Hoover Oh that's cut through and they've got one back and something going Hawks way then Hoover then pulls them away back into this match and that was a bit of a soft one Absolutely this is right on the goaltender's pads he takes the shot he goes through the pads and what can you say he missed it Good rink wide pass Hoover controls it nicely gets on the forehand right through the five hole goaltender should have had that so Phil Hoover makes it Hawks 1, Wasps 2. That's good work. And flying up the ice. One minute left in this extended period. And we've got a bit of a rock at the far end. Young is involved again with Norton. Gloves are off and it was nearly an explosion time. Norton took Young into the boards and Norton was going to get a penalty. He had the elbows up, the, ha the arms up, the stick up, but then Young came back several times, retaliated, and now he's in the box. A moment ago, they would have had a power play. Had he kept his cool, this guy in your picture right now, it would have been a power play for the Hawks. Easy to say when you're sitting up here, but he retaliated with the punch and the shove, and he sits alongside Norton. Norton will be happy with that. Norton is so happy that uh, Michael Shea has joined the team because uh, now Norton is no longer the oldest player on the team. And that just about wraps up the second period. And there's still very little in it. We have another 15 minutes of normal format hockey to come. It's Hawks 1, Wasps 2. <laughs> Welcome back to the Castle Eden Cup. I'm joined now by the Homicide Hawks coach Peter Johnson. Peter, it was fast and furious out there. Yeah, it was an exciting uh, two periods there. You know, it's, it's, we're still in there. We're still one goal behind. And uh, I see we've had lots of good chances. And uh, Stephen Foster's made some big saves out there. But uh, we get no chances, so we've just got to take them. You've been for a quick word with the referee already before the uh, second period nearly came to an end about that penalty. Yeah, that's right. I, I was standing right behind him and I didn't think he saw it. And uh, a minor official called the minor penalty, which he's not allowed to do. You know, that's the referee, but he interpreted it different, so we've got to accept that. All to play for in the third period. Yeah, that's right. You know, we are a team that comes from behind, so it's going to be exciting. Thanks very much, Peter. Now back to our commentary team of Paul Ferguson and Roger Thames. Off we go then, and as Peter Johnson said, one goal is absolutely nothing in ice hockey terms. And remember now the teams are playing stop time, normal ice hockey format. And we've got a fair few over there still in the box serving penalties. Three still to go. And just to complete the roll call, Mike Shea, who got that hit towards the end of the second period that caused all the aggravation, has not come out for the third period. He's still in the dressing room suffering from concussion. Bidner stealing it back. Laplante turning, turning sweetly, but not quite the power he needed. That had power, but it also had a good save from Thompson. And another big save from Thompson as he goes down. Dixon coming in with the goaltender falling. Let the shot go upstairs, and the glove hand came out to make the save. Laplante gloves this one down at the top of the circle. Let's it fly. That went off the metal work. Goaltender a bit late on that, but the next shot came through and the glove hand was there. Young's back on the ice now. That penalty was 2 plus 2, in fact, we're told, not 2 plus 10. Again, lost out shooting Hawks. There's another one flies in. 25 to 13. The shot count very much in Wasp's favour. Tasker given no time to bring the puck under control. Young doing the same to Laplante. And Laplante blocking it away. Bidner picking up a lot of the loose puck. Bidner looking to scoot his way through the two defencemen. Still Bidner. It's a goal there. Scored by 
Little, the coach, Richard Little, leading from the front there and stealing in there to put the Wasps further ahead. You know, when Bidner a moment ago was going down the ice, I thought, he's all alone. He hasn't got anyone to look for, anyone to pass to. He took his time. He found someone, and that was Little, who kept it along the ice and hit the back of the net. But what a pass from Bidner to set up Little, goaltender, unable to stop that one. Hawks won, lost three now. Peter Johnson will know his team's got plenty of work ahead of them to try and stay in this competition. Well, it's always been a battle, this competition, right from the first year to this, the tenth. Certainly the players have given it everything they've got every time they've stepped onto the ice. And there is Damien Smith, and that was an excellent move, and so close. Smith, who's steeped in Durham tradition here, really looking to put his team in total command. The Hawks are still hanging in there, and even a two-goal deficit will give them hope. Want to get a hold of Smith, though. The puck's loose there, and still loose. They all lost their bearings, and they pulled one back. Cahill, I think, got the touch. And the Hawks are still in this. Let's look at this again. Everyone has a man out there. Everyone is tied up. You've got a man at center, a man in a circle, and eventually Cahill gets in there, backhands it into the far post, but no one wanted this puck. Let's look at it again, right from the faceoff. Everyone doing their job out there by tying someone up. The shot doesn't come. The puck is there, the puck is still there, and eventually Cahill spins around and puts it away. 2-3 now, just one goal in it. It's still anybody's match. Cahill out wide again, and they pulled it back to level. Hawks oh. are back with a vengeance. Morrison... Well, anybody's game, I should say so, Paul. A matter of seconds, and it's all level. Let's look at this. Goaltender goes over. He's way out of position by the time Morrison gets in there to find that open net from a different angle. Morrison cuts in front on the backhand side into the far corner. It's all level. 3-3, three, three, then. Okay, something a bit tense. Darren didn't get through to a final. That would be an absolute body blow to the home fans. But this, as we've said beforehand, is by far and away the most open tournament we've ever had here. And this game was always going to be so tight, and it certainly lived up to that billing. Here goes Bidner. Bidner away through the middle. Bidner just losing out there. The goal is off its mountings. Well, that actually looked like it, it was deliberately pushed off its moorings. There's no indication from the officials. A big hook on Bidner, but no call there. He tries to one-hand it in. Well, <laughs> that's pretty deliberate to me. And that would mean it's a penalty shot against the, uh, the Hawks, but nothing was called. Peter Johnson doesn't look too bothered about that. left on the period and in the match two minutes for a winner to emerge in this first semi-final it's a real test of both teams now Bishop forward Young trying to steamroll his way through Bishop trying to take it on again Darren doing some good defensive work though flashed dangerously across the face of Stephen Johnson's goal Roger, a moment ago, the Wasps almost got stung when they made a complete line change and didn't have anyone left on the ice. And we have a penalty coming up. Tasker was dumped. Tripping is the call. Well, they're going to call it a hook. They're going to call it a trip. Whatever it is, it's a penalty. Johnson goes to the box. Anthony Johnson will sit for two. There's the hook on Tasker. 
There's the call in the distance from the referee. The call against the captain. Well, if Durham don't cash in with this power play, then they will be thinking they've left, left their best chance behind them before going into the lottery of overtime. First to score wins it. Keep it simple in ice hockey, but so effective. Plenty of talk between players and bench. Norton now. Smith. Bidner trying to pick up the loose puck. Hawks desperate to get it away. Dixon knocking it back in. LaPlante, Norton, and Thompson hangs on for dear life. See, Norton didn't have a lot of time, so he did the right thing. He let the wrist shot go, but Danny Thompson, who's been very solid throughout this hockey game, came up with a, yet another big save. Here you go. The puck is bobbling back there he sees a man coming at him don't take the wind up take the shot that even took a deflection and the goalie hung on to it that's an even better save than I first thought <laughs> 13 seconds left 13 seconds to get a winner in normal time all the way up the ice no surprise there they're the man short hawks they can do that Dixon there goes the Hooter, and we are into overtime and sudden death to find a finalist from this first semi-final. There are going to be no end to the tension here at the Riverside Rink yet. 41 seconds left on Anthony Johnson's penalty. So, we go into sudden death. Dead simple, first goal wins it. Not the time for mistakes, but somebody has got to go for it in this game. Somebody has got to hit the shot that takes his team into the 95 Castle Eden Cup final. We've never had a sudden death goal in the history of this competition. We've had two finals go to penalties. And Humberside have lost on penalties in their first semi-final. That was back against Whitley Warriors. And will we get a sudden death winner here in the 1995 competition? <laughs> Tasker is there. And again, the gap closed. Bidner. Bidner wasn't far away, LaPlante and they're back to full strength Hawks and that will give them a boost straight away Durham look to keep the momentum of their attack going Bidner skating, Bidner trying to find a way through Bidner puts still loose and that one kept out, Tasker had the had the shot and Tasker again tries and lets fly and Thompson stands firm again Thompson's had an outstanding game. There's a helmet off, but nobody's hanging around for that. It's Bidner's. Still the pressure very much on the Hawks. LaPlante, Bidner. Just tucked back looking for Tasker. And again, he didn't find a way through Dixon. And Thompson on overtime himself. And getting a bit to locked in there is Bishop and Bidner. This is the last thing Bidner wants. He's been the man of the match so far. He should stay away from Bishop no matter what happens. And of course, the Hawks don't want to lose Bishop. He's the kingpin at the back. This guy, Danny Thompson, really has kept the Hawks in the game. Watch these saves. Close in, shots coming from all over the place. Stacking the pads, sliding off. Another shot came in when he was screened and he grabbed it. Good goaltending. Peter Johnson who coached Durham to the opening win in 86. 
really giving this one his all, passing all the instructions to Morrison there. But it's still Durham with the initiative, but looking for the goal. One thing Durham will have to watch is that everyone is getting forward, everyone's around that net. And they, remember, the Hawks have got guys like uh, Morrison to break quickly. Little trying to get a, a clean stick on it, but here goes Young. And down goes Foster, solidly behind it. That might just have opened up a little bit of room. And here comes Iredale! And that's it! Johnny Iredale puts Durham into the final, and the Riverside ring absolutely erupts. Well, it took a brave man, and the man was Iredale. A long pass from neutralized territory. Look at the high flip. Ardale breaks down on the wing. The puck bounces his way. It settles down. The one-timer gets the goaltender on the short side. Up until this moment, the young goaltender hasn't put a foot wrong. Difficult call on this one. It's a blast. You can't tell where this one's going to go. But the right-hand side is open just a bit. He finds that space and knocks it home. That's the game-winning goal. So, it went to sudden death and overtime. The Durham are on course to retain that Castle Eden Cup. The Humberside Hawks, the only other team with their name on it, go out of the competition by the narrowest of margins. They said it would be close. It certainly was. Hawks 3, Wasp 4, Durham are into the final again. John, many congratulations. What a way to go through. Yeah, it was good. It was exciting for the crowd. It going to overtime and score the winner, you know, it's, it's a good feeling. For a while there, I mean, Humberside really pulled you back and got right back into the match. Yeah, they did give it the old juice to them, like they came back and they never stopped trying. They missed a lot of good chances in the front of the net, must hit four, about four times. But uh, that's hockey for you when the, their goalie was hot and so was ours as well, but that's just, that's just the way it goes. Tremendous pressure on you to come through in front of all these fans. Yeah, it put a lot of pressure on you because you're playing at home, you know, and it's, it's the Castle Eden's a big thing for Durham. But uh, we'll just see how it goes and we'll it'll be a good game tomorrow. It's probably one of the best cast games I've played in since uh, the game about eight years ago. Double overtime shootout in the final against Durham. Uh, you know, in this tournament sometimes it's difficult to get motivated, but uh, the game was, was good. It started up fast, uh, tight scoring. I mean, it was just great. Well, we're going to take a short break now, but join us for the next semi-final in the Cast Leading Cup. It's the Whitley Warriors against the Sheffield Steelers. Don't go away.